college. Defining time in any young adult's life. On the surface, this prestigious Los Angeles University caters to thousands of undergraduates every year. But beneath this seemingly peaceful exterior lies a darker truth. In recent years, this university has become one of a growing number of higher education institutions involved in an underground substance trade. The substance? Ramen. Ramen imports in this university have risen 127%. In this documentary, I'll be exposing the dangers and effects of this growing epidemic. To get more information, I paid a visit to Dr. Les Berman. An expert on addictive substances, Berman leads the way in research on the effects of ramen use. In my experience, ramen is one of the most prevalent substances on college campuses. The most alarming fact about it is that it's so easy to manufacture. The ingredients are cheap and they're easy to obtain, which makes it accessible to nearly everyone from the homeless population to students and, and even faculty. So if you want my opinion, noodles, water, and flavoring powder, that's a recipe for disaster. We sat down with a professor that had been plagued by ramen addiction. He asked before the interview that his identity be kept anonymous. I've been a part of faculty for about six years and I've been addicted to ramen for four. I tried to quit, but ramen is a tricky woman. Seductive, sensual, salty. The longest I ever went without was a week, and even that was when I was substituting with pho. Ramen cost me everything. My wife, my kids. It's shameful. It was my students who got me first. They were calling it the nudes. First it was just beef, then shrimp, chicken, barbecue. By the time I knew what I was doing, I was going through four packs a day. I don't even care about academics anymore. The students, they know it. Slipping seasoning packets into term papers. What can I do? So long as I get my fix, everybody gets an A. After hearing there was a ramen dealer in the area, we sent an undercover reporter to investigate. After the purchase, our inside man followed the nude dealer back to his hub. What we discovered on the inside was not pretty. Despite this terrible state, this kid is lucky. Some students don't recover from their food comas. The ones that don't end up here. In the last few years, 10% of the burials in this cemetery have been students under the age of 25. Most of them died while under the influence of ramen. It's a hard lesson to learn, but an important one nonetheless. So next time you find yourself in a situation where ramen is involved, stop. Use your noodle. <laughs>